The good one uh, I'd like to talk about first is ground effect hover. Now, when your helicopter is in hover, it's pushing the air from the top down to the bottom. It's smooth air coming from the top and then it's turbulent air on the bottom. When you're close to the ground, that air builds up and can build a cushion of air beneath the uh, quadcopter or helicopter, uh, which provides additional lift. Thus, when you're flying close to the ground or hovering close to the ground, uh, you require less power to stay in the air than, say, you were uh, at a high, higher elevation, well far away from the ground, where that air doesn't have a uh, room or doesn't build up beneath the helicopter. It actually has room to expand. So you require much more power to hover at altitude than hovering close to the ground. So that's ground effect hover in a nutshell. Next thing I'd like to talk about real quick is helicopter transitional lift. When the helicopter is in hover, uh, all of the air going from over the blades, all of the lift provided by the blades is from the air being sucked down through the uh, propeller uh, with a, a higher uh, pressure beneath it and lower pressure above it. But when you transition to forward flight and get additional airflow coming from uh, the sides going over these uh, prop rotors, that provides additional lift. So it, it seems counterintuitive, but you require less power to stay in the air when you're moving forward than just hovering. So it, you should uh, keep that in mind if you want to extend the life of your battery in flight, get a longer flight time, don't spend it all on hover. Try to get some uh, transitional movement to get that additional lift and uh, using and thus use less power to, to fly your helicopter. Now the third thing and the important thing to know is uh, the bad one which is vortex ring state. Uh, power settling, settling with power and again it's just more or less you, your propeller stall. When that happens, that usually happens when you transition or when you descend from altitude. Say you're hovering at altitude and you start descending. If you descend too fast you can descend into the turbulent air beneath the helicopter or the, or the quadcopter and stall out the blades. Once that happens, the, the blades start to suck the turbulent air beneath it, above it. So you get a ring of turbulent air going around the blades, all the way around the blades, and they call that the vortex ring. You enter that vortex ring state, and your helicopter will start to descend. Even though you're at full power, there's nothing you can do to stop that descent. Uh, you might think that your helicopter or quadcopter is defective, and it's not. You, it's just that you've entered blade stall, you know, the VRS, vortex ring state. And that can actually take you all the way to the ground before you can lift yourself again. Um, this is a bad condition in that it, it occurs with real helicopters and real multicopters such as the V-22. Uh, um, back in 2000, I believe, uh, they lost the V-22 just to that and killed a lot of people. So. Um, once you enter into that condition, it's very difficult to get out of it, if not impossible in most cases. The best thing you can do if you enter a vortex ring state is to give it full forward pitch and just hope that the helicopter can slide out of that uh, turbulent uh, flow that it's entered into. So I want to demonstrate that with this uh, X5C quadcopter. Um, I'm going to demonstrate vortex ring state and, and try to get out of it, but <laughs> I ain't going to guarantee that I can do that. Okay, now I've installed the uh, camera onto the X5C, so this is demonstration of vortex ring state with an overburdened helicopter, with a helicopter or quadcopter that's carrying extra weight. Uh, VRS, vortex ring state, starts to become very pronounced, and it gets much more difficult to get out of, uh, get out of it once you enter it. Okay, dropping quickly, applying full power. Notice it keeps dropping down to the ground. <laughs> that was at full power. Let's do that again. Sending it up again. Full power. And it goes all the way to the ground before it recovers. Okay, let's take it up real high and see if I can recover by giving it forward pitch to get out of that. Forward pitch, full forward pitch, and there we go. I got out of it. I didn't come all the way to the ground. 
So again, the best way, it's very difficult, but the best way to do it, to get out of vortex ring state, is to give it floor pitch to try to get out of that turbulent air. Okay, see how it, I got out of it? Let's do it again. Let's demonstrate it one more time without getting out of it. No, no pitch at all. And there it goes. Now the, the quad is not defective. <laughs> that is what happens with Vortex Ring State. And a lot of you probably have other quadcopters, not just the X5C with its camera installed, but this isn't particular at all, or just the X5C. This is, can occur with, uh, say you got a quadcopter with a camera that you installed yourself, and you're wondering why when you go full power it, it can't stop itself. It's because the propellers are stalling. So again, the best way to get out of it, give it full forward pitch. Now, even better than getting out of vortex ring state is to try to avoid it completely. Um, I'll go into that next. I'm going to have to put a new battery in here. Okay, I got a new battery in there. Um, the best way to avoid vortex ring state for your overburdened quadcopter uh, is to utilize those two other uh, phenomena that I discussed earlier, which is transitional lift and ground effect hover. Um, when you're descending from altitude, it's best to not come directly straight down and to avoid entering that uh, turbulent air, but to actually descend while uh, maintaining some type of movement through the air, either forward movement or um, you can do gyrating movement. I'm going to demonstrate that here shortly. And when you get close to the ground, you flare and enter ground effect hover. Okay, I'm altitude. Now I want to come down. I, dis I decrease power, but I'm keeping some movement onto the quadcopter to avoid entering vortex ring state. Flaring, ground effect hover. And landing. See how that bounces when it's close to the ground? It's bouncing on that ground effect air beneath it. Going to altitude again. Now I'm, once you get better and can fly nose in, just try keeping some forward movement and then just use the rudder to bring yourself to the ground. And once you get close to the ground, flare out, use the ground effect, and land. I'll demonstrate that one more time. Let's send it up to altitude. This is for more advanced uh, quadcopter pilots who can fly nose in. <laughs> Again, I'm just using the rudder. Or you can use a little bank, too, if you want. And then slowly decrease the power to bring it in. But I'm always trying to keep some movement onto the quadcopter so I can use less power for the landing. And then I flare at the end and land. One more time. Sending it up to altitude. And giving it forward movement. Turning it with rudder. So I'm just corkscrewing to the ground is what I'm doing. That's one of the best ways to avoid vortex ring state. Now, those of you with more advanced quadcopters, you'll notice when you put that return to home feature, how slowly it descends. Well, there's a reason for that. It's trying to avoid the vortex ring state by just uh, doing a slow descent. But most people want to get to the ground a little bit faster than that. And again, this is probably the best way to do it. Just utilize transitional lift to assist you in your, your descent. <laughs> I'm turning a little bit too hard for that. But again, I'm using transitional lift and it slows the descent. Okay, that's my discussion of Vortex Ring State. Uh, it's Quadcopter 101. I hope you learned something today.